two tickets to burn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my first guest is one of the greatest filmmakers of our time. His films include Mean Street, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, and Casino. His latest film, Kundun, is in theaters right now. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Martin Scorsese. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. I saw um, I saw Kundun la last night, uh -huh. and uh, this is a stunning movie. I mean, oh, visually, thanks. it just bowls you over. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, we we took us about 100 days to shoot it, and uh, Roger Deakins, uh, that was our director of photography, and yeah. uh, we shot it in Morocco. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in Morocco, we, we shot in this town called Wazazat, uh, which sounds like it's part of a. Uh, but have a Lucas Stella routine, you know. Right, what was right. That? Was that? Yeah. Right, right. And um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use it, actually. Uh, we're yeah, not <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's not bad. But actually, Wazazan is in the middle of the. Um, it's right on the edge of the, the Sahara Desert, and it's over the Atlas Mountains. Um, and it was the originally the first. Um, it was the last, the last outpost of the Foreign Legion. After that, it was nothing. So it's pretty much uh, the it's end of the earth here. Pretty much there, yeah. And uh, that's where I saw you guys every night. <laughs> yeah. We're on there? Oh, you're on there. We're on, because well, we're on NBC Europe, and I guess there's a satellite, there's a satellite. or something. We, we're in the, you know, the Berber Palace Hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, the Kenzie Agour Hotel, they have it mm -hmm. right there. There's all they got, Ibrahim and Ahmed. Because I heard a rumor it. that you, uh, <laughs> I, heard a, I heard a rumor that you shot out your TV set. <laughs> I was curious <laughs> what that was all like about. A little edgy, a little edgy. What yeah. a beautiful place. I'm really removed from society. Yeah. Click. Hi, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Click. I swear that they're every night. Wow, oh, that's amazing. Night. Well, let's talk wild. about more important work, your yes. film. Uh, yes. This is very unusual because I'm watching this movie. It's not often you go and see a movie by a major, uh, you know, director that's, that's done by, uh, it's a Disney film. It's by the, from the Disney yes. company. Yes. And no big American stars in it. You went no. all the way. It's all Tibetan. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we felt that because of the nature of the material, the only way you could really do it seriously or... Uh, 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 honestly, was to have Tibetans play, play the parts, real Tibetans who are not uh, actors, and not right. people who wanted to say, not people who said, look, I'm a non-actor, I'd like to hang out for like five months on a movie set and do a picture. No, th these people, once they were finally found, uh, really were representing their culture and their religion and uh, the Dalai Lama and that sort of thing, so they were there. They were there. Were uh, you getting pressure from the studio, you know, just... You know, maybe Pat Morita could be the Dalai Lama, you know, maybe. <laughs> there, was, there was a couple of hints, you know? but I, I said, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think it's going to He's very go. good, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Check out Karate Kids 1 and I'm 2. I'm sure. I'm sure. I look there later. I like the part in your movie where <laughs> the Dalai Lama just shows his moves. <laughs> Crack! Oh! You're um, fine. You couldn't do it. I mean, and also it's a story of, uh, of Tibetans, and I didn't want to do a film where you had the uh, Westerner mm -hmm. kind of translating for us, so it makes it easier for us. And I just say it's, they're people. If you, you you follow them as people, you care about the little boy. Right. You care about the family. The six you, care about you, you have different actors playing yeah. different stages. Uh, I thought the the two year old is amazing. The six year old I thought was excellent. Well, the six year yeah. uh, the Dalai Lama at age six. Yeah. What, what's he like? What, uh, what does he do? Kunga. He's from uh, New Delhi, mm -hmm. and uh, he. Uh, he's a remarkable boy. I was, I was sitting there after about a week working with this kid. I'm looking around him. He's running around the set. Then I see he's moving a certain He's walking with his hands in his pockets and he's doing... So I realize he's imitating me. He was imitating yeah, you? Yeah. The kid, and finally, he, he, he figured how to yell, you know, action, cut, got behind the camera. He was just taking over the picture. That is... <laughs> well, I'm serious. That he is was, so you know, annoying. I was trying to stop that. Get over here now. Come on. We have and, to go to work. And, does he... Uh, does, is, is that someone who... Uh, what, what's going to happen to someone he's, like him? It's very interesting because he's what they... He's a, he's a reincarnate. A reincarnate. They believe he's a reincarnate of a, of a, of a very important... Uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhist monk, mm -hmm. and uh, he has to go to monastery. He'll be going to monastery in about uh, two or three weeks. But he wanted to get a couple of pictures under his belt before. He, said, <laughs> no, he wants to be in more movies. If you don't want it, believe me. Believe me. There aren't many people in Hollywood who are like, pursue big film career or Tibetan monk. Which way to kid, go? The kid's going into the monastery in about three weeks. You know, something, that I, something that just occurs to me is, is what's it like to hang out in Morocco with a bunch of Tibetans? You know, it's just... It's because, yeah, you could not film the movie in Tibet Couldn't for obvious there. reasons. No, the, yeah. the Chinese government is not thrilled that you made this not movie. Not too happy. And, and also, we couldn't go to India. Right. I tried. I was in India for two and a half weeks. We tried, and they, um, 
They're very nice. After about four or five months of asking, they, they finally said, we cannot give you an answer at this time. Right. Which meant, you know, they can't get involved. So, uh, uh, we, we use that out. excuse here a lot. Yes. We can't <laughs> give, they, they weren't going to give us a no, but right. they weren't going to give us a yes. And so immediately I said, let's get to, uh, let's get our production manager and uh, uh, production designer, Dante Ferretti, to Wazazat. And uh, within a half day, they called up and said, we could do it here. Mm -hmm. I can make it look like Tibet. It's a great... It looked... I mean, you know, I, not that I've been to Tibet, uh, but uh, not lately anyway, but... It visually, it's stunning, and you believe for all the world that you're in Tibet. We oh. have to do a commercial right now. We're going to okay. take a quick break, but when we come back, uh, more with Martin Scorsese. So stick around. <laughs> back, everyone. I'm here with Martin Scorsese, and uh, we, uh, we're going to show a clip now from Kundun, and tell us, uh, th this is... Uh, this is right after they've selected uh, the young boy as the uh, reincarnate of the, the 13th Dalai Lama, becoming the 14th. Mm -hmm. And um, they take him out to a special ceremony out in the middle of the desert where they have all the, uh, all the uh, different uh, dignitaries meet. And it's the first time he's really announced as the 14th Dalai Lama. And it's a very, in the, when you're watching the film, it's a really strange moment because he's a two-year-old kid who thinks he's, yeah. or to everyone else appears like any other two-year-old yeah. kid, and yeah. these people show up and say, no, this is the reincarnation right. of the right. Dalai Lama, and they have this ceremony. Take a look. Yeah. And I should point out, because that's an interesting part of the movie, too. Yeah. I should point out that the, uh, the couple that they cut to in the crowd, the mother and father. that's the mother and father, and it's a weird thing for them, because they, imagine... They, they, figured he, they figured he's got to be a high lama of some sort, but not the, not the Dalai Lama. Right. You know, this is a big, a big deal. Yeah, and it turns out actually very nicely for them. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some cash prizes that go with it. <laughs> <laughs> he got a refrigerator. Oh, and, yeah, and finally got more horses and stuff. Um, there's, uh, it, it, I was curious about, and just talking about movie making, but uh, the film Titanic, um, mm -hmm. which a lot of people have been talking about, has entered this new stratosphere of costing in excess of $200 million. Yep. And I was curious, as a filmmaker, your films are usually done on a fairly conservative budget, especially yes. by, uh, by Hollywood standards. And right. I think, for you, a stratospheric movie budget was on the order of $50 million, I 50 think, or for 60, Casino. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 55 for Casino, actually. That's right, and was, for yeah. you, that was just the most, that was, big, that yeah. was the most money that yeah. you could imagine spending on a right. film. If right. they came to you and said, we want you to make a movie, and here's $220 million, oh. would you, how would you do it? What would I mean, you... first thing that comes to mind, you'd take the $60 million and pocket the rest somehow. <laughs> To make it, I mean, there's a way. What's wrong with it? How, how are you going to do it? I mean, the picture. I, I could help you with this <laughs> if you want help. <laughs> I have a. You stick around after the show. We're going to have the wig, but yeah, I, yeah, giant <laughs> wig. You know, what would, what would you do with it? What would you do with it? I mean, it, first of all, the film has to be. You know, a lot of that money, uh, 50 million went into uh, special effects. I can't wait to see. I haven't seen the film yet, Titanic. Right. I understand the special effects are wonderful. I want to yeah. see that. They are you know. impressive. I mean, I have to say, when the budget starts to get that much, yeah. one of the reasons I went to see the movie it's was to see, see somebody spend $200 million. Oh, it's just, I mean, if the movie had been a guy in a room burning $200 million, <laughs> I'd have watched for three hours. I'm like, that's, oh, man, that's incredible. And, of course... That's a movie, another movie we might want to make. Yes, yes. <laughs> make a $50 million where halfway through the Absolutely. movie they burn the rest. Oh. Um, I also want to talk to you about this book, uh, which yes. is, I was flipping through today, and it's got a lot of uh, my favorite movies in here. It's a personal journey with Martin Scorsese through American movies. These are some of your interviews with directors. No, these actually, what this is is the actual script and format of uh, the documentary that I made with Michael Henry Wilson, who co-wrote right. this. Uh, which will be available in March, and uh, will be, I think be shown at AMC, American Movie Classics. But you did so, talk to, you talked to a number of uh, a few, people who were involved few, yes, with the a film. Few, a few, But what this is not really a history of American movies. What this is, for me, American movies started with the first movie I saw by title, that I can remember when I was five, four years old, uh, Duel in the Sun. And so that was the first thing I remember, this wild color movie with Jennifer Jones and Gregory Peck and incredible uh, uh, direction and, mm -hmm. and uh, insane music. and. And, and uh, very, very over-the-top melodrama in a way. And then um, uh, I, I'll go through. It's like taking somebody through kind of uh, your private museum. Uh, and the films I talk about are not the films that are like the Academy Award winners and things like that. There mm -hmm. are a couple in there, but not all of them. And, and I talk about films that sort of meant something to me when I saw them, uh, when I was young and then well, my teenage years and that sort of thing. And then, and then some films that definitely influenced me, pictures like Bigger Than Life and uh, 
uh, a number of others. Uh, it's kind of so cool many. because so many people write about certain movies get written about a great yeah. deal. And then I was flipping through here, and there's a still from the Roaring Twenties, which yes. I'll never forget when I was a kid, and they replayed that on yeah. Channel 38, which is a local yeah. Boston affiliate. Yeah. That is a great it's movie, a great and I was, you know, 10 years old, I thought, that's a great movie. It's the seminal gangster film, Hollywood yeah. gangster film. They did, they're into everything, show business, and uh, rum running, all kinds of stuff. It's, it's wild. It's, and it's, it's, it's incredibly violent. People tend to violent. think violence entered movies no. in the 60s. That is a scary, violent and, movie. And all the gangster, gangster films come from that, and that earlier film, Scarface, which we talk about, uh, the one with Paul Muni, Paul and Muni, Howard Hawks yeah. directed. Yeah. You know. It's incredible stuff. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Kundun is at theaters right now, playing everywhere. And this book, uh, A Personal Journey with Martin Scorsese Through American Movies, is out right now. People should check that out. Always a thrill to Thank have you. you on the program. Thank, Thank you. you very much Thank for being you. here. Martin Scorsese, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with Maria.